Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney, and today in Homemade Science, I want to go back and take a look at the curveball flingers. Uh, I want to show you some designs to make them out of wood, cardboard, uh, plastic tubing, poster board. I'll show you an example of one that's sold commercially, and I'll even show you one that was made by nature. So, let's get started. Now, what I like about these pieces is that every student can try this. They don't have to know how to throw a curveball or even know how to throw a baseball. All they have to do is is be able to move their arm and they'll get a curveball. That was good. And even better, this is a piece they can build for themselves, experiment with the design, and see what gives them the best curve. Now, of course, this is a good outdoor activity, but some of the materials are light enough that you can actually demonstrate it indoors. Ready, Savannah. Better be ready. <laughs> to start, if you want something easy to throw, these foam balls make great projectiles. Now, let's take a look at some simple designs. I'll start with the wooden ones, a little bit tougher to build, but uh, these are nice and sturdy. It's got a nice handle to hold on to. And you can change the size of these according to what size ball you're throwing. For example, this smaller one might throw anywhere from 3 inches down to 1 inch. And this larger one, this is 6 inches and this is down to about 3 inches. This design can either have a rounded or a square base. It doesn't really matter. We're going to make it with three dowels. These two will be the guide for the ball. And the third one, of course, will be the handle. The next step is to drill the holes. Now these can either be drilled all the way through or just part way through. Next up is the gluing process. I like to put glue on both surfaces of each joint that's being glued. After the glue dries, the final step will be to varnish it. This design is pretty much the same except instead of using dowels, I'm gonna use these thin slats. I gave the base half a curve added a hole for the handle. Each strip of wood is held in place with two screws and then I'll glue the handle into the base. After a bit of light sanding I'll apply varnish to all the wooden surfaces and while the varnish is still wet I'm going to add a little bit of sand to the surface where the ball makes contact. That'll help it grip the ball better. to work really well, but if you want to go simple, the answer is to either make or find some type of cardboard tube. Uh, you can adjust one of these in a minute or two. Uh, you can make a lot of these for a whole classroom and be outside testing them in a matter of moments. The requirements for all the tubes is basically the same. The ball has to fit easily through the tube. You need some type of stop at the bottom, and to do that I can use a piece of cardboard, and I'll use a piece of tape to attach it right to the bottom of it. I'll wrap another piece around it just to make it a little bit more secure. You'll notice that the bottom's not airtight. That's to allow air inside the tube as the ball's leaving. So in its simplest forms, that's really all there is to it. It's a matter of finding the tube and a corresponding ball that will fit inside of it. A uh, very easy one, for example, here are rolls from paper towels. This one's bottom is sealed. I can put a ping pong ball inside and it's ready to go. On a larger scale, this is a uh, mail tube. I could cut this in half and that would just about be perfect. All I'd have to do would be to open up the bottom and then it's ready to go. Now here's another easy one to build. This one's going to be made with two Pringles cans. This one starts by putting holes in the bottom of one of the cans. And on this can I've taken the bottom out altogether. And now it's simply a matter of taping both the mouths together. So here's another one that's ready to go. 
Now what about if you don't have these containers or mailing tubes? Well, you can simply start with poster paper. To help retain the cylinder shape, I tried rolling it out several times using a piece of PVC pipe as a guide, and then checked it with the balls I was going to throw in it. When I was satisfied with the size and shape, I then used glue to help hold it together. I had tape along the seam just to make sure it doesn't come apart, and there's the cap in the bottom with a hole in it. Now these will work fine just the way they are, but if you want to improve them, here's a couple steps that'll make them better. One idea is to make the surface rougher where the ball makes contact. So I've cut this tube in half, I'd add some glue to the surface, and then simply sprinkle some sand on that glue to make the surface rougher. Uh, another possibility is this tube is very smooth, so I've added rough tape on the inside and the ball is going to rub against the tape. If the tube is too big, uh, you can cut it down, add a handle to the back, and that's going to make it a little, be, little bit easier to hold than trying to hold this big tube. Ready? Good curve. All right, here's the Pringles flinger. Let's give this a try. Well, that worked well. You can really see them curve, and they're not going far because these balls are very light. But you sure can see them curve. Now here's the one made out of poster paper. Let's give this a try. Here's a clear plastic tube. A tube from paper towel rolls. I think these work really well. They would be excellent for using inside. All right, now that we've seen homemade ones, let's take a look at a commercial one. The ball for this is a fairly hard plastic and it does have some texture to it. So if I want to throw a curve ball, I can get a pretty good curve, but I got to throw it pretty hard. And it's going to travel at least uh, 125, 150 feet. The higher speeds did make the ball difficult to catch, and at the lower speeds, we didn't notice it generating any lift. Its path tended to follow the arc of a parabolic curve. With the foam balls, even at the slower speeds, the curve was much more pronounced. So for demonstrations, this was probably not the best option. If I'm looking at throwing curve balls, I can go back to using the styrofoam balls, which is going to give me a much more dynamic curve to it uh, for a lot shorter distance. And now I do have one more that I want to show you. This one was actually made by nature. It's the bark off of a fallen tree limb that I had. Uh, it peeled very nicely into the right shape. It works just like the other ones. Now, since this last piece was made in nature, I thought I'd try throwing some natural spheres with it. Uh, this is a peach tree and it stopped some of its smaller peaches on the ground, so I thought I'd try and fling these and see if they curve. Well, I don't see too much of a curve, but I am getting a lot more distance than if I tried throwing it by hand. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to know more about the Magnus Effect and why the ball is curved, check out my other video on curveball flingers, where I get into it in greater detail. At this point, I want to thank you for watching, and come back and see me again. Okay, bye. No, not curving. <laughs>